Hi guys, I've been asked to give an example of uh, some of the learning objectives that come from chapter 5. So, one that we didn't actually end up working up in, out in class that I think might be useful for folks is that of a car going around a banked curve. So, I want you to imagine that, uh, let's see, looking down from above, let's suppose we have a road that goes in a circle, something like this. So a car is coming along, let's say, he's here, he moves along the circle, and he reaches a point right about here, say, and we're looking down from above. The radius of the circle, let's say, is R, and the question is, what are the forces acting on the car as he goes around? Now, um, how do we want to view this? Let's imagine we're viewing the car from behind, so we're looking at him from this perspective, and so from that perspective, the center of the circle is here. The car is going to be over here somewhere. Now, the, if the road is flat, that's one thing. But it often happens in a curve like this that the engineers who designed the road end up banking it. So let's draw the car from the back. There's the wheels. There's the taillights or whatever. Okay, like that. So the car is moving away from us into the page. What forces are acting on the car? Well, assuming he's moving at a constant speed. So let's, let's assume V is equal to a constant. Okay. <clears throat> There's going to be weight. So we have a weight force acting down. That's the earth acting on the car. And we're going to have a normal force from the road. So the normal force of the road, of course, is going to be perpendicular to the flat surface of the road. That would be N like this. W. Okay, and that's the road acting on the car. Or automobile, I guess I call it automobile. There we go. Boom. Now, uh, let's think about that for a second. If we look at those forces from the point of view of above, looking down from above, the only force we see, the weight force, is directed vertically, so that would be into the page in this uh, above view diagram. And the normal force has a component toward the center of the circle. And the whole key to these objectives, this chapter 5 objectives, at least uh, many of them, uh, in particular 5.3, the one dealing with circular motion, Anytime you have something moving in a curve, there's going to be a component of the net force pointing toward the center of the circle. That's the so-called perpendicular component of the rate of change of momentum. Remember, the parallel component changes the speed, the perpendicular component changes the direction. So if you have something whose direction is constantly changing like this, you're going to end up with one component of the net force pointing perpendicular to the momentum, and it always points toward the center of the kissing circle, and uh, that's just that's the way it works, as we found. Now, what I want to do is scoot this stuff out of the way a little bit, and let's draw a slightly more abstract free body diagram. So I'm going to put the center of the circle here. I'm just going to make the car a dot now. We'll let the weight be a vertical force. We'll let the normal force be at an angle. The <clears throat> circle the car is moving in is a horizontal circle, so that means um, I'll set my x and y axes up. x this way, y this way. I want to set the axes up in such a way that the rate of change in momentum points along one of the axis directions. That's generally the best plan in dealing with this stuff. So um, let me move this a little over to the side, and I'm going to start writing out the momentum principle. Let's do it one step at a time, and uh, we'll write dp dt is equal to the net force. Well, the net force, we've got the weight, and we've got the normal force. So that's the weight plus the normal force. Then I need to break this guy down into x and y components, so I'll do that, x and y. Now, What's the rate of change of momentum in the x-direction? The x-direction is the direction that points toward the center of the circle. So that's going to be minus mv squared over r. 
In the y direction, nothing's moving. The car's not going up or down, so the rate of change of momentum is going to be zero. Now in the x direction, the weight has no the weight has a zero x component, but it's minus mg in the y direction. And <clears throat> the normal force in the x direction is minus, if you think about it, it's the opposite, if the angle of the road is theta, that means the angle of the normal force is theta over from vertical, so it's got to be the opposite side, so it's minus n times the sine of theta, and then the y component of the normal force is plus n times the cosine of theta, because the y component, the y component and y is the adjacent side, the x component, nx, is the opposite side. So we get sine theta, we get sine theta for the opposite and cosine theta for the adjacent. Okay, very good. So let's scoot this guy up a little bit and let's see what we can conclude here. Um, from the y equation, I can solve for the normal force in terms of the angle and the weight. I can plug that guy back into the x equation and uh, what do I get? Or another way to manage this is I can multiply the top equation by minus 1, move the mg to the other side of the equal sign here, and then divide the top equation by the bottom equation. Then I get v squared divided by rg is equal to tan theta. Notice this is the exact same formula we had for the flying pig. In other words, the flying pig had a tension which was uh, played the same role in the flying pig that the normal force plays in this problem. So actually the equation that you end up that relates the speed, the acceleration of gravity, the strength of the gravitational field, rather the uh, radius of the circle and the angle is exactly the same equation. So um, we could solve for the speed, the design speed of the road, we could solve for the radius of the circle you need to get a certain speed at a given angle and so on. So if I were going to solve this for the design speed, it would end up being the square root of r g tan theta. So you tell me the size of the circle, you tell me the speed you want, and I could work out the angle, or you tell me the angle, I could work out the speed, and so on. Now it's a nice generalization to add friction to this guy. Uh, I'm not going to have time right now to do that, but if you're interested in sort of pursuing this, that's a nice thing to add. You, you put in some uh, <clears throat> static friction that keeps you from sliding down the bank if you're going too slow, or sliding up the bank if you're going too fast. And that actually puts, instead of having a single design speed, that gives you a minimum speed and a maximum speed. Um, all right, so that's all there is to it. We'll see you guys next time.